now I'm going to have a little test flight inside which I don't have much of an inside unfortunately it's just basically the size the space the size of a desk is about all I have but uh, fortunately the quad copper is not that big so I'll try that and I'm going to tie it down with uh, something heavy and a little bit of string or something just to make sure it doesn't fly up and chew my face off all right <clears throat> let's see how this goes figured out what the problem is. I'm using rate mode here, not auto level. That would explain it. Ah yes, one thing I forgot to do was to say which modes I want to use. Uh, so as you recall we're using channels 4 and 5, actually 1, 2, 3, 5 and 6 rather. Uh, we don't have any switches on our transmitter so these two are just both going to be permanently switched off. So that is low. So I'm going to use auxiliary 1 being low and I want to set that to be uh, this is really weird. This, these buttons don't respond very well for some reason but try, keep trying to click them if they don't work. Anyway so uh, I turn, turn this checkbox on here to say that when switch aux 1 is in low position which it is now uh, I want to use angle mode which is auto level as far as I understand there's also horizon mode which is a cross between auto level and rate mode which I think is a little bit trickier so I'll just go with this angle mode which I think is the simplest one um, so once you've checked that on there you will want to do write so that will write that setting to the flight controller and you might also want to do read just to check that once you've done read it comes back the same and now we can see the angle is showing up in green which means it's active uh, so that is the only mode that I've flown in so far so hopefully we'll have a bit better luck this time okay let's give this another shot Still pretty twitchy.
feels like it's in acro mode. Oh, <laughs> we came loose. <laughs> that was lucky. Well, there you go. That's the maiden flight. So it looks like all the hardware is in place correctly. Uh, everything spins in the right direction and it lifts off. Uh, unfortunately, it's extremely difficult to control. And I'm pretty sure I have the, the MultiWii software set up correctly now, so it's not in rate mode anymore. It's actually in auto level mode. But I think the problem comes back to these potentiometers and the horrendously large dead zone that they have. So I know I've gone on about this quite a lot in this video series already, but really that is a huge problem. In fact, I think I'm actually going to have to backtrack on using these joysticks altogether. Um, I think they're just going to be totally unsuitable for what we're trying to do. Um, so I might have to look into finding something better than this and something a little less cheap ass than this and maybe have to spend a little bit more money. That's a bit of a bummer, isn't it? It would be nice to know for sure if these were the problem. Actually, that gives me an idea. Hmm. Suddenly, everything started working perfectly. cheating well that's the answer then isn't it so it's just the potentiometers in the sticks here that are the problem everything else seems to be working just fine in fact when I switched over to using this transmitter uh, it felt really good um, pr pretty much the same as the CC3D so far at least uh, indoors uh, I'll have to take it outside and fly it around a bit more to get a proper comparison uh, but what I have running in here is is nothing special. It's ex almost exactly the same sketch that I have in here. So I haven't really changed anything in that respect. All I did was adjust the um, the mapping of the values for the sticks because they give a little bit different readings than these sticks here. So I haven't really cheated too much. Um, it's just a matter of having higher quality potentiometers inside the joysticks that's all it is um, so yeah that's the build pretty much um, done apart from of course finding some nicer joysticks so I think what I'll do for my next video is I'll take it outside and fly it and give it a proper outdoor test with this transmitter so I'm, I'm <laughs> afraid to say I'm gonna chicken out of using this transmitter until I've got some nicer joysticks uh, I, I can't really recommend using these and yeah I couldn't really in a clear conscience tell anybody that these were a good idea to use so that's a pity but I mean they were only three dollars and you can't really expect too much for three dollars so I'll have a look around on the net and see if I can find something that I can just swap onto here as a replacement that works better um, even if it costs a little bit more it will be a lot more fun in the long run to fly than with these horrible huge dead zones in the middle. Anyway, so um, that pretty much wraps up the, the actual build part of this video series. Thank you for watching along and if you try any of this stuff yourself do let me know and yeah, thanks for watching.